The difference between here and law enforcement is we don't kick your ass. I'm your host, Jay Walia. Let's clock in. Today we are in City Square Shooting Gallery and we are about to check out all about what a shooting instructor does day to day. Now Malaysia has some of the strictest gun laws in the world. Whether that's fortunately or unfortunately, that means we cannot do any shooting today and the only shooting that can be done is done by our crew on their cameras. That's where our shooting instructor Calvin comes in. Let's go clock in. Hi, I'm Calvin. I'm the lead instructor and manager of City Square Shooting Gallery. I've been here for 10 years. Shooting range is basically for private individuals that have their own license, security companies and also club members, people that do not have license, they join the club and the club applies a shooting license for them. What are some of the standard operating procedures for someone who is not a license holder who want to come here? Process for the license takes about three to six months to fill up a form, join the club, pay the fees and then we will do a preliminary background check with the police and what do they have to do would be to give copies of their IC, go for a urine test to submit all fingerprints to make sure he doesn't have a criminal record. I think that that's the most important thing here. I mean, I'm really excited to go in and sort of check out the safety briefing for myself. Shall we go and get briefed? Sure. Okay, let's go ahead. I just want to impress upon you what can a bullet do to you. For example, this is a perfect bullet, alright? So what happens when bullet hits something? It can deform, it can break apart, it can flatten. Can I actually touch yeah, this? Yeah, you can, you can. This is a chopping block. I thought it was styrofoam though. No, it is chopping block. So you will use yeah. this to hit your head. Your head will break before the chopping block even breaks. But look at what happens when you shoot the chopping block. Wow. Okay. The smooth part here is basically yeah. the entry and the exit. Looks like Swiss cheese, guys. This is not styrofoam. I thought it was styrofoam. It's like, your, you know the chopping block your mom has at home? Yeah. This was shot by a 9mm. 9mm would refer to the diameter of the bullet. Next, look at this book. It may be thick, but look. Entry, wow. exit. Wow, this is pretty intense. First of all, I've not seen a phone book in a really long time, but wow. So what's next on the safety briefing itself? So you learn about the bullets. Yeah. So what happens next? Take a look at it. I'm going to give you a few minutes and then I'll explain to you. So rule number one is treat all guns as if they're loaded at all times. Which brings us to rule number two, which is always point it in a safe direction and do not point at anything that you don't intend to destroy and that includes yourself. Now, if you were to turn Turn back and look at the target over there. I want to shoot that guy. I cannot do this. Because if I do this, I just laser you. Why is it dangerous? Because I may do some involuntarily reflex motion and I might end up shooting you. So what I would do is, I would either do like this or sidestep and I shoot the target. I thought it was a style thing when I saw it in movies when they, when they do this. Yeah, yeah, they actually do that. It may look like a dance, it may look silly, but to people who know what they're doing, they're doing the right thing. And now, let's go to rule number three. So, the index finger is the trigger finger. And we were to pick a gun up, we always do this. Make sure the trigger finger is straight on the frame and out of the trigger guard. Why we don't put a finger on the trigger? Because sometimes someone could startle you or whatnot, squeeze, boom, that's it. So, finger straight all the time. This is the hallmark of a professional. So, I have my target, I aim, I'm going to shoot, finger goes in, boom, after I'm done, finger stays out. Okay, and so that's always the procedure that only after you have shot straight away the fingers back out again. If you're going for multiple shots, you can keep on staying, but once you stop shooting... Once you stop, it's off. Yeah, it's off. It's always off if you're loading the gun, clearing anything or whatever not. If you're not shooting, finger out. Rule number four, identify the target, know what's in front of the target, what's behind the target and the backstop or background. We don't shoot at things that we do not identify or recognize. How different is a safety briefing here compared to someone in law enforcement? The difference between here and law enforcement is we don't kick your ass. Okay. <laughs> So I would say that I've been briefed. Let's go and find out more about the firearms itself. Oh wow. So like those ones, are they filled with like sand or concrete or whatever? They are empty. You see the curtain type of thing? It's actually covering metal plates angled like this. What happens is when you shoot, the bullet will enter the drum, hit the metal plate and it will splinter. So we are reducing splinters coming back. Now splinters can do a lot of damage. Look at the floor, it's not smooth as compared to the other tiles, right? And uh, look at the roof. It's all splinters. It's embedded itself there. Wow, look at this. All of these splinters that you're showing me, what sort of firearm does this have? Is this like a very small caliber weapon? This is the 9mm caliber. Our range is only rated for pistols. Lunch break! 
could you just explain to us what the salary range like for being a shooting instructor? I'm basing it on a private range like okay. us because there are also instructors that are paid by state associations and National Sports Council. For private range, it's anywhere from 2 to uh, 4k a month depending on level of responsibility, experience and whatnot. Oh, okay, so you know, speaking of level of responsibility and experience, what's the career progression like for a shooting instructor? You always start at the reception to get used to our safety procedures. After that, you progress to a shooting instructor where we will evaluate, you have to take a course. Uh, at the same time, you can either be an armorer as well. They will know how to maintain, clean the guns. But over here, we are a pretty small operations. I've had a good lunch break. I hope you have too as well. Back to scheduled programming. This is like the closest I'm gonna get to a gun, even though it's a dummy gun. Maybe you could just explain what sort of gun this is. I see this shape in movies a lot. It is based on the Glock 17. We use it because the weight is real, as a real gun. You can remove the magazine to practice your reloads. So this is the actual weight of a Glock? Yep, loaded. Wow. It is meant to simulate 17 rounds of ammunition. So when it comes to shooting the gun itself, there's a certain stance that you need to take. Could you maybe just show us? Okay. Face me. Now I want your toes to touch the line and stand slightly shoulder width apart. So right now, you are balanced and it takes a lot to move you off yeah. balance compared to putting your feet together. But we have not solved the issue of you going forward or backwards. And that's when the recoil would... Yeah, so what do we do is simple. The left foot to be slightly in front. Yes. Okay, your weight needs to be centered. Lean your body slightly forward until you feel most of the weight has shifted to your toes. Okay, now hold your hands like this. Bring it forward. Now, if you feel that you're going backwards, you just have to lean forward in. Okay, so that's recoil management. If you do it correctly, right, the recoil of the weapon will never be greater than your upper body weight. Okay, okay. got it. Now, the next thing is how to grip. Grip it as hard as you can until it's shaking. Reduce pressure slightly till it stops shaking. Okay, now try to move your trigger finger. Can you move it without moving the other fingers? Yep. So that's the correct pressure. So now I figured out how much to grip the gun. Okay. The right way to hold it. Okay, yeah. now your thumb. Put it up like this, it means you've locked your wrist. Okay, now bring the dummy up to eye level. This hand comes up, you do a thumbs up and then you rotate it forward like this, 45 degree angle. This part here, you'll touch this part. Ah, okay. And then you wrap your hands around it. Thumb on thumb. Now, yeah. imagine you're squeezing a mangosteen. Okay. Try not to hyperextend. Okay, so you need to press it so okay. that the gun don't move. Yep, that's, that's about it. I'm just gonna put that on the side. What's the procedure like to actually get a gun itself? Having firearms is a privilege in Malaysia. The issuing authority is the police. They will determine whether you get the firearms license or not. So you apply at the district HQ where your address is gonna be. Say for example, over here we are in Sagambut, so we are under Sento. You know, when we were discussing earlier, we were talking about the shell casings and yeah. things like that. Yeah. What's the implication or what happens to someone if they are caught? They're looking at possibly jail time. You come back here, you get caught with it, you have a lot of answering to do. We are more strict when it comes to club members because club members, the license is only good in the club vicinity. The moment they leave the club, they're not supposed to have anything on them. So we remind them to double check their pockets or whatnot. Sometimes spent casings can find its way into articles of clothing. Yeah. When it comes to weapons, how often do you need to maintain or inspect a weapon? Maybe after a few thousand rounds, then we do a complete strip. We take out everything where it will take about 15 to 45 minutes to clean one gun. And then we put it into solvent. We have our ways of doing it. It's like sending your car in for maintenance, oil change, and then you have your major maintenance. Have you ever been called in to sort of like consult on things like film and stuff like that? In late 2016, the producers of Police Evo, they wanted us to train the actors. They wanted it to look real. Okay, how long was the training for with the actors? The main actors, total, seven months. I was also hired to be on set to make sure everything is correct. Do you get a lot of opportunities to do field work, even work with law enforcement or anything like that? We do go to their range sometimes to consult them or sometimes to give feedback. Uh, we can advise them and who to call, who to go and see. Certain law enforcement agencies, they will ask us, can we provide them training packages or whatnot. So for people out there who want to know more about City Square Shooting Gallery or even get licensed, where can they go to 
check you guys out. We have a Facebook presence. They can message us. There will be an auto reply that states that it's only for licensed people or not. If they need to know more, we will either email them, but we recommend that they drop by so we can explain more to them. Thank you very, very much, Kelvin, for letting us clock in today. I've learned so much. It's definitely a pleasure. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to follow us on all of our social platforms and if you really enjoyed this particular episode, then check out one of our previous episodes where we clocked in with a close protection officer. What's that exactly? Think bodyguard. That's it from me, Jay Walia. Till next time, I'm clocking out. Whoa!